Welcome back, TJ. Appreciate it. Uh, Appreciate it. So Fight Week Media Day, is it, is it a day that you've been looking forward to or is it a day that you've been absolutely dreading? What's, you know, what, what's your thought? I guess looking forward to, you know, I'm, uh, I like Fight Week. Fight Week still that nervous energy to get out there and perform. Uh, questions asked about the fight. Um, for me, this is recovery week, you know. Um, it's kind of a weird thing to say that, you know, everyone comes in here and makes weight. But for me, it's, it's time to recover, make the body feel good, and uh, get out there and show off. But you know this fight week's different than a normal fight week, right? Yeah. You know the questions everybody wants to ask. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. So, is it, I mean, is it difficult to have to go back? Because I imagine this is something you want to leave behind, right? So is it difficult to know every interview I do, I'm going to have to talk about the suspension and EPO and all that? No, nah, man. I mean, that's kind of why I was so upfront about it anyways. You know, it's kind of like doing your own therapy, um, getting it off your chest right away. Um, nothing I haven't said is – I mean, everything's already been said. You know, I didn't hide behind anything. I put it all out there, and uh, it is what it is. You know, it, it's something you just got to – I'm a very mentally tough guy, and uh, it's not going to ever break me. Is this one mentally tough, tougher than, than normal? Because, right, like, if there's one slip in your performance, like oh, if yeah. there's one step down, people go, told you, that guy can't do it without the EPO. I mean, are you, are you, are you thinking about that at all? Not at all, man. And there's not going to be a slip in my performance. I'm going to go out there and look dominant, so it's, it's going to be a great one. Yeah. Of course, the question everybody has, they want to – one time or multiple times. Yeah. You know, Cody Garbrandt came out, and he's like, oh, God, I've been doing it for years. So, I mean, what, what did you think, first of all, I guess, when he made that statement? I mean, did you see I didn't, it? I didn't know he made the statement. I don't really pay attention to uh, everything going on. I don't watch many fights unless I'm fighting you. Um, I don't really pay attention to the sport for the most part other than what I'm doing, you know. Um, immersed in the gym. I'm immersed in my training. Other than that, I'm in fi family life and business. Um, but for him saying that, I mean, it's kind of ignorant because everything's posted out there on the Internet. You saw it put me under a microscope after I failed that drug test. I got these emails just uh, showing that I was being drug tested, drug tested, drug tested. And I was like, well, I've only, I haven't been drug tested today. But they went back and drug tested me. Uh, so they keep an A and B sample. They retested all my samples from back uh, from when they very first started. I think it was right after my cruise fight. Um, and all of them came back flying colors. So people can say what they want. And, of course, there's going to be those speculations. That's the – the reason of, of putting you on blast, right? Because they don't want people to cheat. If you don't want to cheat, then don't go through my footsteps, right? So, um, yeah, I mean, those questions are going to come. Those comments are going to be there. Those thoughts are going to be there. But uh, it's public knowledge that, you know, nothing's going to hinder it. Do you think it'll ever be fully behind? I mean, do you think you'll have to hear about this, like, like every fight for the rest of your career? Uh, I don't think so. You know, I think it's going to erase after Saturday. I'm going to come out there and see how good I look. Nice. So you were supposed to fight a couple months ago, right? Uh, suffered uh, a cut in, in the training. Is that what happened? I guess what happened, and what was your mindset then? Because I'm, I imagine you're thinking about this amazing comeback story, and then it's yeah. like now I got to pull out of a fight. What, what, what was your thought then? Super pissed, to be honest, because uh, we were 13 days out from the fight. I was drilling, um, just doing some drills, um, some kickboxing drills with you know takedowns and stuff, and just wrong timing with my, my, my teammate. He dipped his head as I shot a shot and we hit a headbutt and it was a massive cut, you know. Um, so I had been taking the stitches out four days before the fight. So there's there's no way I was going to be able to do it. Um, bummed because camp went so well. Um, everything was feeling perfect, you know, and just my emotion of wanting to get back and do this thing already, right? So it had been two years and then May and now it's, now it's going to be two and a half years, right? So uh, just long camp. Yeah. Was it important for you to keep the matchup together? I mean, because yes. why was that important for you to keep the matchup together? Yeah, I was afraid that they were going to just kind of give San Hagen someone else, right? So that was my biggest worry was that this is the fight I wanted. He's number one contender. I couldn't fight for the belt because of the debacle they're going through. Um, this is the next best thing. Uh, it's a great fight for me. I know, I know the fight that I can win and, and get out there and perform very well. So I wanted to make sure it was going to stay the same opponent. So I told him, I'm supposed to fight May 8th. I was like, push it to the end of May, you know. Uh, that June, that beginning of the June card, they wanted to make sure that we were still a main event, and the soonest main event they had was July 24th, so now we're here. Does the history together between you guys, does it factor into this at all, or is it, does that not matter in a, in a real fight? Uh, it doesn't, doesn't, I mean, for me, it's nice, and I've always done very well against guys that I've trained with. You know, I'm, I'm a very good guy about game planning. Um, I know where guys' weaknesses are at, and it, it's, it's nice, for, nice for me to know that, but it all matters when the lights turn on. And you can talk about practice all you want, but we ain't here to talk about practice. We're here to do it in front of everyone. Are you looking at this as a number one contender fight? I mean, it hasn't, I mean, hasn't it been is. told to you at all, or is that the way you're viewing it? Uh, it's definitely a number one contender fight. This is a real title fight, to be honest. You know, I was not very impressed with uh, Aljamain and Jan in their last fight. Um, I think 
Corey Sandhagen is the toughest in the weight class right now, and uh, this is a true title fight. You know, I'm the true champ coming back, and uh, it's time to prove it. Is there either one of those guys you'd rather fight for the title? I think Jan, I think he's the, the better fighter. Watching that last performance, he, he did uh, very well with his game plan against uh, uh, Sterling, and I think he'll win the next fight, so I'd, I'd probably rather fight him. Last thing for me, I guess, what, what's, what's the goal here overall? I mean, I know you want to win, you want to get back to your title, but I'm just wondering, I mean, like, your reputation and all this happening, I mean, are you hoping to, to rehab that at all or are people to leave that behind or, or are you just kind of turned on the world and say, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not worried about it anymore? I mean, excuse my language, but fuck your reputation, you know what I mean? I mean, you got to worry about yourself. I have a great life. I have a great family. Um, I'm just worried about my, my, my coaches, my uh, teammates, my family. Other than that, I could care less. You know, you can't be. I've been in this game too long to want to scroll through the comments and think what other people fucking think that are sitting behind their computers and not having anything to achieve for. You know. Yeah. There we go. Cool. Um, you said that this is the fight you wanted. Obviously, when you take a bit of time out of the sport. You know, some people would maybe want an easier fight, easier matchup to get back in there. What's the difference between the mindset of wanting to fight a top tier guy right away versus maybe getting back in there and getting shaking some of that rust off? Uh, just to prove that I'm the best. You know, I, I ultimately believe it. So why wouldn't I go out there and fight the best guys? You know, I I've been in the gym for two years. I haven't been taking time off. Um, I've made some great changes. Um, I believe I'm the champion, so I got to fight the toughest guys. And I don't have time. I'm 35 years old. I don't have time to waste. Um, and we're in the UFC, you know, there, you say easy fights, like let's talk about, it. I mean, there's no easy fights, right? I mean, we've got the best in the world here. Anything can happen. This is a sport that's often said that evolves really quickly. I know two years isn't the longest time, but do you see any new guys in the division or anything from the new top guys in the division that's changed since you've been away? Oh, there's definitely always going to be new guys, right? I mean, people are achieving to be, be their best. I mean, Sanhagen, I don't even, I think he had a, a, a couple fights when I was in there still and had the belt. Um, so, yeah, there's always going to be changes, um, but the sport hasn't changed. You know, you got two arms, two legs. Uh, only so much can happen. Regarding the suspension, I think it would be fair to say that you're not the only guy in the roster who's <laughs> taken performing those kinds of drugs. Yeah. With, that in, with that said, do you feel that you've been fairly treated, unfairly treated, or reasonably treated with this whole thing? I don't think anyone cares, right? I mean, it's an unfair thing I did. So, I mean, you get bashed, you get bashed. If you don't, you know, I mean, there's guys that have denied things that they've done, and they've gotten a lot less attention for it right i came out was up front about it and told everyone told the whole world what i did and i feel like i got bashed for it but i'm happy with the way i handled it and that's all that really matters you know i mean how everyone else wants it like again i don't i don't go through my comments i don't care what anyone else thinks i care what uh how my like i can it's never too late to rewrite your story i care about what my three and a half year old son is going to see when he rewatches my fights how he's going to see my story and how i dealt with adversity You've been candid this whole process, and so just out of curiosity, you trained with it, now you trained without it. Have you felt a physical difference without it? Did it make a big difference to you in that camp when you were taking it? No, man, I was dying. You know what I mean? I would go on, I'll never, there's no way I'd ever go to 125s again, right? So I would, how about we do this? Let's let every one of my opponents take what I was taking. I could care less because it did not help me. I actually feel 10 times better now than I did going into that fight. Um, I had to lie to myself and tell myself how great I felt going into it because you're a mentally tough, best in the world, pound for pound fighter. But to be honest, like I could care less if any of those guys are taking what I was doing. You know, I was trying to get my levels back to normal. My hematic had crashed to the 30s. You know, I was anemic. I didn't want to wake up in the morning and train. I was cold constantly. So to understand what I was going through and the decisions I made and why I thought I should do it, I mean, yeah. Do you think that's part of the whole thing that no one will ever really understand? No, nah, no one gives a shit. I mean, it's, you know, I mean, no, no one cares about that. I mean, I cheated. You know, what I mean, that's that's just, that's what it is. Um, no one cares about why I did it because they're all excuses. You know, everyone has one and they all stink. Yeah. DJ. Yeah. DJ. Um... Hello. I can hear you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, when you got that phone call um, that you had popped, um, who, whose um, idea was it for you just to come straight out? Was it yours? Was it your manager's? Was it like a family, teammate? Like who's? Who it was. It was mine. Um, I actually got a lot of flack from it from my manager and things like that. I was like, especially because I was like all doped up on pain pills after my surgery because I, I knew about the suspension before everyone else did, right? So as soon as I found out about the suspension, I lined up shoulder surgery. 
Um, I got shoulder surgery, and then the next day it was being announced, and I'm laid up in a sling, and I just knew that the best thing was to get in front of this thing, um, hear it from me rather than someone else. Um, again, I got ridiculed for it because I was so upfront about it and let everyone know what happened, but I still think that was the best way to handle it. I think that my family is, my, my, you know, my grandpa, my dad, everyone that raised me know that I did the right thing. Um, and then you've said in interviews that um, you don't have to fight for money anymore. Yeah. Um, you're set. Um, I guess what more do you have to prove? Like, do you have a checklist that, that, that you have left? Um, like, what is it? Um, you know, the two years I turned it into a blessing, right? It was a silver lining. I never obviously choose to do it again, but I used that time very wisely, and I set up my business, and I set up my life outside the octagon. So I know when I retire that I'm good right? I don't have to come in here and fight. And I mean, it's pretty nerve wracking when you're first getting into the UFC and you know, you get paid to show, you get paid to win and you need that money to support your family. You want to live a certain lifestyle. I mean, that's a lot to worry about and to not have that is, is very nice. So, um, to set up the business outside of it has been great, but my checklist, um, this is just who I am and what I do. So I, I didn't know I'd be fighting this late in my life. I didn't know I'd be in the UCO for over a decade, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I feel great. I didn't realize my body would be this great at 35 years old, um, but I owe that to Sam Calavita and what he's been able to do to me. Um, I could fight a lot longer if I want to. <laughs> you say that you didn't expect to be here. Um, do you, did, did you want to retire earlier? I, I, I expected to. I, I always told my wife, I was like, yeah, I probably, don't, I probably don't see myself fighting after 35 years old. I'm 35 right now, you know? I mean, obviously that suspension played a... a, a, a fact in it, right? Maybe if I would have just continued to be dominant this last two years, I mean, who knows what would have happened, right? But um, I was also thinking 35 years old, man, I'm going to be old. I don't feel old, though. You know, I feel like a young kid still. Um, my, my, my wife made me grow out the beard a little bit because I've still been looking too young. She's tired of, <laughs> tired of making me look, uh, I look like a child. So uh, maybe this makes me age a little bit, you know? Your beard looks good. Nah, thank you. <laughs> it grows in very, uh, very patchy, but it's all right. Um, and finally, so you know, you're, you're coming back with no fans. And so, yeah. you, you, I mean, it's basically like when you were the, on the ultimate fighter. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, it, does that play, play, play with your mindset at all? Or is it just, I mean, you, you're going in there to, to kill? I mean, it sounds like there's going to be a little bit of fans in there, right? It's not going to be like a, completely like it was during the pandemic. Um, I was hoping to be a big, giant crowd, right? Um, but then I started thinking about it and how streamlined this is and how easy it is. And it's a way for me to dip my toe back in the water without having to go full bore because I'm the bad guy. You know what I mean? Like, let's, let's be honest. I'm the villain, you know? And so uh, I'm sure I would have been booed in a big crowd, you know? So it's one of those things that maybe I get to dip my water in and get my feet back in there, uh, establish how great I am and everyone understand that and then, and then go back to the big crowds. Who knows? Thank you. Good luck. Of course, man. appreciate it. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? There we go. I always wonder, uh, especially after you were in the training camp and so close to the fight, you take the cut. I always wonder, because I see it sometimes in some training camps where guys will actually implement headgear mm -hmm. and others don't. Did that change the way you went into this one? Is that something that you think in the back of your head when you get closer to wear headgear, or does it affect uh, the training to actually put that on? I slept with my headgear on. <laughs> no. Um, man, we were drilling. It wasn't like I was sparring you know, when I did get cut. Uh, but yeah, Dwayne did say that maybe I should have been wearing my headgear during that time because we're doing kind of like live drills, right? Like going easy, but you're still doing live motion, kind of fight simulation stuff. Um, I said that I'd wear my headgear the whole time this uh, second fight camp around, but I didn't. Um, it was just a freak accident, you know? Actually, that camp sucked because I got cut at the very beginning of it, and then I reopened it up at the end of camp. So um, maybe I did need a little extra time to make sure it healed up all the way, and now it's good. I actually... Uh, got it tested at Tyler Womble's place at uh, Classic right when I started coming back and doing some live motion. Caught an ac accidental elbow on it, and uh, I thought for sure it was going to be cut right back open again. But uh, the I went to a plastic surgeon the second time around to get uh, the sutures even better, and it uh, held up great. So I'm, I've got tons of confidence that it's going to hold up. Awesome. And then going back in this time, and you kind of touched on a little bit when some of the other answers. In, in this two years that you've been away, I guess – on the flip side, what's been the most frustrating thing that you've dealt with? And what has been, you talked about your business, what's been the silver lining in the, in the time away as well? Uh, I mean, I think the roughest thing is just watching the weight class take off without you in it, right? Like seeing the things happening without you, a guy wrapping a belt around his waist when, it, when you believe it's yours, you know? 
Um, that's the, that's by far the toughest. Um, but it was pretty easy to forget about it when you're a civilian, right? Like it was nice to have that civilian life and to, to live live a normal life. Um, yeah, that I will be looking forward to retirement kind of thing, you know? The silver lining was the two years that I got to spend with my son. Um, the first year of his life, I was fighting title fight after title fight. And um, I completely submerged myself into training when I'm in a fight camp. And uh, I feel like I missed that first year. I didn't miss it, but not as involved as I wanted to be. Um, and so not having to solely focus on a fight for two years I got to really, especially in the developmental stage he was in, you know, I feel like when he's grown up and he's, you know, from one to three years old, he's so many good habits that you can develop and I want to be, I want to be there for that. I want to have a big role in it. I love being a father. I wish I could have 10 kids right now. I mean, it's been so much fun. Um, so that was by far the silver lining. Setting up business is another thing too, but ultimately it was uh, being a dad. And then lastly, just to sort of end it on this fight week, Looking at uh, Corey, just sort of break him down for us. What growth have you seen in his game? Where is he dangerous? And what are you expecting him to bring in this fight? Uh, Corey's a great athlete, you know. Um, when I even trained with him, you know, he'd come in. I mean, you think he was a basketball player before he started becoming into martial arts, right? So he was one of those guys, like, and I was impressed with him being able to scramble and, and do the things he's been able to do. And um, he's got great footwork. He's got great distance control. Um, you know, things I guess I've seen the best maybe is confidence, things like that, right? Maybe believe in himself a little bit more. Um, but he's still the same fighter. He's still the same guy. You know, he's still the same guy I train with, and I know that I can come out there and put a beating on him. So I'm excited for Saturday. And, and you kind of touched on there. Lastly, what do you need to do to make sure you get your arms raised at the end of the night? Ah, uh, be myself, man. Be out, be be the same TJ Dillashaw that left that cage with with the confidence and knowing that I'm the best, and then continue to add those things that I've I've done with new coaches. Um, being, I mean, the great thing about myself in fighting is that I could be a different different fighter from round to round. I can switch my game plan up when I need to. I can game plan for opponents because I'm so well rounded. I don't think other guys can do that because they're a one trick pony. You know, they have a stronger background. If you're a strong grappling guy, we know what your game plan is. If you're a strong heavy striker, I know what your game plan is. You don't know what mine is. You know, I got to keep you guessing. That's what makes me the best in the world. Is you never know what I'm going to do. I can come out and take you down to ground and pound you in i can i can submit you i've been doing gracie i've been rolling some gracie baja with felipe della monica for the shoot the last four years five years and i haven't even got to show it yet i've been all knockouts right um or i can get out there and strike with the best of them you know i've already done it with it and so i'm excited to to get out there and, and show that's how you be be the best in the world thanks so much best of luck of course yeah embrace that the rest of your career? I mean, do you want to be a villain the rest of your career, or do you hope that one day there's a, there's a, a crowd actually cheering for you? <laughs> I'll definitely always still have a crowd cheering for me, right? But when uh, I got, I became the villain, um, I think pretty easily when I was fighting against Garbrandt, right? It was like such an easy narrative of me being the snake. I mean, Conor McGregor made me the biggest villain you can because he's had all this power behind him, right? Like anything he said was gold. And so I was this snake in the grass and I traded teams. Like I was doing what you need to do to become the best in the world. Yeah, I was thinking about myself. I am in a one-man sport. You know, if you're not doing it, then you're a fucking idiot. Excuse my language. Like if you want to be the best in the world, travel the world, train with the best, worry, be selfish in this sport, I'm not here for my training partners. I, I am. I go and coach Juan Archuleta, but when I'm in my fight camp, I'm worried about myself. I've had to tell Juan that, like, be selfish. Be the best in the world. Do what you need to do. Find those best coaches. Find. I'm the CEO of TJ Dillashaw. You know, like a lot of these other fighters, they let their managers make their decisions for them or their coaches, this and that. I make my decisions. I'm the CEO of this business. I'm going to hire the best coaches in the world. I'm going to find the Tyler Wombles, the Dwayne Ludwigs, the Felipe's, the Daryl Christians, and the Sam Calavitas. I'm going to find these guys and train with them. So if Dwayne's moving to Colorado, I'm going to go train with them. And if you have a problem with that, go fuck yourself. You know what I mean? So if that makes me the villain, then hell yeah, man. I mean, let's, let's go for it. Um, but I'll always have all of the people around me that are cheering for me that I really care about. Um, that's all that really matters, you know? All right, guys, appreciate it.